Like this, this, this whole additive of oh, we can't win in Minnesota. Well, Kirk Cousins can't win on Monday night. When's that game? Kirk Cousins and the Vikings haven't beaten one single team in their nine wins that is above five hundred. Yeah, because so the Raiders I mean, like, crap their pants and they drop below five hundred. So now they have no team above above five hundred at all that they beat. None. Sorry, I went on a bit of a rant there. <laughs> okay. It just pisses me off that they want to. Oh, Washington only lost by five points. Minnesota lost by five or six, and everyone claims that they're better. Come on. So it. Yeah, but didn't didn't Minnesota barely beat Washington? Well, I mean, they beat them by eight. But the thing is, if if Washington had started Haskins and had given him the QB1 reps instead of starting Case Keenum with a fracture in his ankle and a high ankle sprain, mind you, high ankle sprain and a fractured ankle, he had both. And he still played because Jay Gruden sat a guy because he he dicked down his daughter. Ooh. I'm sorry. If Haskins plays, I think Washington wins. That's just me. I don't know. I just... I just, you know what, like, this week and next week are going to be fun. The Lions game doesn't even bother me right at now. Like, I'm just so sick of hearing about the Bears resurgence now. And, like, it's like, great, you beat the freaking Cowboys. whoop de freaking la And the week before, you beat the Lions. whoop de freaking la Like, who cares? Like, I know. I'm glad, I'm glad it gave your fan base some hope and everything. Like, I, I know what it's like to be devoid of hope at this point in the season. It's much more fun to be a fan of a team when you have hope. I'm not saying that. But, like, you can have hope and not sit there and try to act like all of a sudden Aaron Rodgers and the Packers and their defense are, are – you guys are so much better than they are now. That's what bothers yep. me. It's like, okay, yeah, you can give me like, okay, if we do this and this, like – and I can see the logic. Yeah, they give up 122 yards on average, so you can run the ball. But can you make sure those rushing yards turn into seven points and not three? Because if not, you're not going to beat them. How uh, how on a subject I want to bring up right now, how the tables have turned, folks. Last year, Packers were going into Chicago Field around this time frame. I believe it was week 14, week 15. And they eliminated the Packers from the playoffs. And they were leading the division. Now, it's completely 180 degrees. Packers have the lead in the division. Chicago's coming into Green Bay. Just saying. And now you have Aaron Rodgers. Who remembers that game, mind you? He, he remembers. You, you don't think he keeps receipts? And he remembers all these people talking. Oh, he's done. He's on the decline. He only threw one or uh, he's only threw one touchdown against Washington. Jay, how many times have we seen Rodgers have his best games against Chicago, no matter who's on the field for the defense? Well, I, I don't know. I, I, I think that, oh, well, you guys beat us 10-3 to in the first game of the season. I've heard that one, too. They only scored 10 points. And I'm like, in the first game of the season? Like, are you kidding me? We're going to sit here and act like the first game of the season has any weight to bear on what that was the hell is a, that going was our on in week 15. Games, that too. Like, for the love of God. Like, I, you know what bothers yep. me is is uh, some of these people aren't dumb, and, and I hate to, like, disparage them over some comments, but it's like, y'all are getting paid, you know. Why do you got to say dumb shit like that? You're getting paid yep. good money to be on TV and and – and give out football knowledge and takes and your opinions don't have to be agreed upon by everybody and you're not always going to be right but when you say dumb shit like that that you know damn well nobody gives a shit about the first four weeks of the season yeah nobody does three percent three percent of the league started significant snaps in the preseason in the entire nfl this year well, that's why also, too, I think I, – I really, really think – I just think this game is not going to be as close as people think. I think the Packers are going to come out with a game plan and remind who the daddy is of the division. Took a little hiatus off for a couple of years. Went on vacation. Yeah, there were some injuries. 
They had to get a new coach, new GM. Well, guess what? Daddy's back. It really, I, I just, I can't see, I can't, I mean, I, I appreciate that Nagy's finally taking the training wheels off for Mitch, letting him run a little bit, but with that first preseason game in week one, like, that's why me and you, Jay, always make power rankings after week eight, because we don't take anything in the first eight games of the season, because the first four weeks... Sit most of the for some of those teams sit most of their players, i.e. Green Bay. We played some starters in week three, then that was it. And then all of a sudden, bam, week one. That's the starters preseason. Yeah, it was against a division rival, but it was also the Bears preseason too. They didn't play anyone, and it shows just off of pure talent, who won. Like, come on. I, I that's why I hate that argument, oh yeah, it was only ten three. Oh, okay. So you're telling me it's the same Packers team since week one, 14 weeks later. No, not even close, Bears fans. Not even close. And I'm not saying that's what I'm expecting to see from the Bears. Oh, no, I, I don't expect them to. I expect them to do a lot of read option. I expect them to have Mitch take the ball on the read option, basically to, to sucker the defense for the Packers inside to David Montgomery. I expect that. I already expect that coming. I expect him to be mobile, running around. But there's something they have not faced with Mitch Trubisky facing the Lions and the Cowboys doing this. Kenny Clark is healthy again, folks. He is in the QB's lap all the time now. He has been fully healthy since the Giants game. He was he was almost healthy in San Fran, and he was still one of the few rushers getting a Garoppolo. He was putting pressure on and pushing him inside and outside trying to get the Smith brothers to get him. Kenny is at full health, and I guarantee you, you have a backup right guard right now next to Cody Whitehair. You're telling me you're going to put a backup right guard without trying to give some help to Kenny Clark? Oh, then what's that? You guys are Darius Smith sitting right next to him. Come on. You're telling me the pressure is not going to put Mitch right there in his lap right away. He's going to try to run. Preston is a Darius so long, so fast. I don't see, I just don't see Mitch getting the running that he did against Dallas. I just don't oh, see and it. By the way, can I, can I say this? The biggest, of course you can say it. It's our show. The, the biggest thing that's different from week one. And it will not happen. Not one single time, not on first down in the first drive, not on second down, second play of the game, and not on a third play of the game to force us to punt. It will not happen on the first, the, not on the second play of the second drive, or on third down of the second drive, forcing us to punt. Do you know what that is? Tell me, Jay. Lane Taylor. Getting blown up by Heen Kipps. Uh, I just Heen talked Heen about this with my buddy tonight. With one arm and then also guess what else won't be happening because he's mm. getting blown up there won't be another guy on the field that makes the tackle for a loss two of them called two of his them name is raekwon smith who was the game wrecker in week one where they could Danny not Danny Trevathan isn't no, going to be on the field either yeah but Neither Trevathan wasn't Hicks will be back okay but he's not going against Lane Taylor. He's going against a Ellen guy Jake. that's ten times as good of a lineman as he is. Last week, he put Jonathan Allen, who is a bull of a man, on his keister. Literally pancaked one of the better defensive linemen in the league. Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, didn't do anything last week. It was Kerrigan. It was the edge rushers. Interior linemen, no. I didn't see Lindsley or or Jenkins give up anything. Turner had one or two mishaps, but that's it. I I didn't see Jenkins get handled all. And those are two damn good defensive tackles in Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen. They put a hurting on that defensive line. Now you have and plus I was looking at the injury report, Jay. Hicks, yeah, they say, oh, yeah, he might be he, – he'll be back. But the thing is, I, I listened to the press conference today. Chuck Pagano used the words, oh, well, everyone hopes he'll play. 
and Matt Nagy said, yeah, he, he said he's going to try to play. To me, you know what that says? It's all in the doctor's hands. To, usually in that situation when you try and activate a player, it's in the coach. It's usually you know, all right, I know he's been practicing, he's been doing this. Those phrases, to me, don't sound like a vote of confidence. Like, like oh, he'll try to play. No, if you're a head coach and you want to even play mind games with the team, you got to say, no, no, he's playing. The game's coming back. We just got to activate him. Like, uh, does that not scream he's not 100%? I'm still not... I'm still not sold on Nagy as the overall great leader. Like, I think no, he might I'm not be a good about offensive that. coordinator. I'm talking about Hicks playing. I don't well, know if he I is. know, but I mean, to me, it's I'm not sure whether he's smart enough to say that or if he really is being honest. He's just honest, and he doesn't know how to play the coach. Especially game. with his troubles at the podium lately. He's been getting flustered, too. He's. I don't know if he's going to handle the, the stresses of being a head coach very well, very much longer. Coordinator, yeah, he can, he's fine. No, he's a great head coordinator. Coach. He's a great offensive mind. That has nothing to do with oh. this. Head coaching is totally, it's a different animal. It's, it just is. It is That's why Pet said he never stress. wanted to be a head coach again. Well, and I think when you you kind of get shit rubbed in your mouth when you're you, when you're doing it for Cleveland and, and you're still to this day the winningest head coach of Cleveland. Do you know that no coach has still won nine games since they fired him? I know. I know. There is there is a point. How many more seasons do they have to go under nine wins before we we call it the Petten curse? Mm, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm just saying, like they literally like said, you know what? We forced Johnny Manziel on you, but it's your fault. We're losing. You got to go. And and they haven't been able to get to that mark he had set the season before since. Because he got fired, what, like five weeks in? I think he was like one in four or something like that. And they fired him. Yeah. In the, in his second year after going nine and seven. Yeah. With like using four different head coaches. And he's a defensive coordinator or was, you know, before he was head coach. I don't know. <laughs> Although I will say Patton is pissing me off because he's playing too much soft. I want more attacking, like we saw last week. More attacking with less soft coverage. And and again, I'm going to reiterate this for across the league, defensive coordinators. I employ you. I don't know who started this trend, whether it was the Dom Capers and the in that zone schemes, you know, where they'd stop blitzing and just play their backup zones and, and fake like they're blitzing. Stop with the freaking prevent shit for the last freaking fourth quarter. Like, can we just stop? Just play defense. Let If you want it, like, honestly, and, and head coaches, tell your defensive coordinators, <clears throat> very respectfully, if we want to close out the game, we'll do it on offense. Don't give up nine-minute three-point pl- drives. Like, it, it doesn't, like, you're throwing the offense out of rhythm by keeping them on the sidelines that long. You're not doing us a favor. And I think head coaches have gotten to this idea that that's good for them, and then that's why their offense is so hanky-janky all the damn time. Defense needs to get off the field in five minutes or less. Like, for real. Get out there, attack, hit people in the mouth, knock balls away, make a turnover, or force a punt. You Like, the idea on defense, Dave, that is starting to bother me is everybody thinks it's okay just to give up three points. Well, you know, eventually you can get three-pointed into a loss, right? Yeah. The idea on defense, verbatim, is to keep the other person from scoring, period. Can we get Mm -hmm. back to that concept? Because I like it better that way. I wouldn't mind it. No, I'm just uh, going back here and taking a look. Um... At, between Amos and Haha. Uh oh. He's back on this. On, because I'm so irritated about it. Amos <laughs> even has eight passes defended. Haha has five passes defended. Um, let's see. I believe from what I saw, Amos has more tackles. Um, 